reporter that we've covered quite a bit, Mike from Payday Report, Mike mm-hmm. Elk. And something happened a couple of years ago, and this was before we started covering him and before we were even doing a show. And the News Guild is an organization that we've run into before, and they are now certifying, they're like a nanny state, effectively, for the censors and for the um, for the intelligence state. And they are certifying news organizations. And there are a couple of outlets that have a top rating from them, and they brag about that, and they're super excited and, and proud of that, and proud of them for that, but... Um, they also flag a lot of outlets that question the imperialist state, that question the state narrative, and incorrectly. I know that, for example, Consortium News has been under assault by NewsGuard. And the problem is, is that if NewsGuard, this is News Guild, but if NewsGuard, you know, certifies that your outlet is not on the up and up, other outlets will not consider your work as credible. But what's happening here, this is News Guild, and this is actually a union. So, you know, we started out the live stream saying that this is um, journalism under assault. And this is where we're talking about. So this is, this is crazy. This is a, a writer, a journalist's union that is trying to get a writer, a journalist, to reveal their confidential protected sources as well as the um, communications with their source. So what happened? The News Guild is seeking to compel a journalist to give up his communications with his sources as well as his correspondence with the former New York Times columnist, I believe that's Ben Smith. So move is in part um, of an ongoing legal battle between the Guild, who's the largest journalism union in the country, and Mike Elk, like I talked about, a former member and independent labor reporter. In June 2021, he sued the News Guild and the top, and several of its top leaders alleging that they had retaliated against him after he notified them of sexual misconduct allegations against former newspaper Guild of Pittsburgh president Michael Fuoco. Man, that's an unfortunate last name. You better make sure you get that one right. So this is in Pittsburgh. The defamation lawsuit, which is filed in Allegheny County, right, Pennsylvania, has reached a discovery phase. And as part of its request for documents, News Guild asked for Elk's communications with the sources who notified him of the misconduct allegations. The union also asked for his communications with former New York Times media columnist Ben Smith, who broke the story on the allegations and reported the News Guild that ignored tips about Fuoco's behavior for months. Elk served as a source for Smith. So now they're trying to get Ben Smith to also give up, or or to him, him to give up the communications with Ben Smith. Elk has refused to turn over these documents, citing the First Amendment, Pennsylvania Shield Law, which protects journalists from being forced to disclose the identities of their sources in court. All right, the News Guild filed a motion to compel Elk to give up this information last month, and Elk filed an objection on Monday. Now a judge is going to have to decide whether he must turn over those documents. All right? He says, they want to subpoena my sources, the whistleblowers who told me about the sexual misconduct problems within the News Guild. This is a dangerous precedent. If they win this case, every right-wing billionaire in the country is going to cite the News Guild anytime they want to sue a journalist. That's that's pretty important. That's pretty bad. Right? right to jail, right away. Well, pretty much, but no, you have to give up your sources. In his lawsuit complaint, Elk alleges that News Guild leaders defamed, harassed, and physically assaulted him after he asked the union to investigate Fuoco. He's seeking a jury trial and compensatory and punitive damages. Right? News Guild leaders have denied the allegations, of course, in the lawsuit, which... Union President John Schloys called meritless. However, however, asked about their discovery request, they said that he that, that Elk, Elk has asked for his communications with Smith and sexual su- assault survivors. Um, huh? Elk denied this, right? And he says he's neither requested the names of survivors nor the News Guild's correspondence with the New York Times. 
This is nonsense. Right? Floyce also said that Elk's requests for any documents related to the allegations in his lawsuit complaint are overly broad. So dismissing the whole thing as anything important whatsoever. What a surprise, right? Um, he initiated the lawsuit seeing that, seeking that information in his discovery request. Ours is basically a defense to try and understand the nature of his allegations. Uh-huh. They know what this is. We need more information to be able to understand his allegations to prepare our own defense. Aha, uh -huh, right. They've argued that because he's the one who brought forth the lawsuit, he can't use the First Amendment simultaneously as a sword and shield. Actually, you can, and that's exactly what it's designed to be used for. Right? And then he weighs his privilege where sources have information that goes to the heart of the defense. So really, again, they're, they're trying to compel this journalist to reveal his protected conversation. So here's what happened. Ben Smith then left the New York Times to found Semaphore. I'm not a fan of Semaphore. Semaphore is a corporate whore of a newsletter yeah. company. Right. They first reported the News Guild's discovery request on Sunday, roughly two hours before they published a story. Floyd emailed News Guild members a copy of his request for comment, along with an update on Elk's lawsuit. He told Pointer that he decided to release a statement ahead of Smith's story because he wanted to provide transparency to News Guild members, not to get out ahead of the story, which is about to blow up in his face, right? He says, I have a First, first Amendment right to publish what I want to publish. We try to be as transparent as possible, especially with litigation against our own members. Uh-huh. Now, the thing is, is that, and they haven't even said this here yet, this guy, Foco, was guilty and resigned. Mike was correct yep. in all of this. And now he's going for blood. All right. In its initial request for documents dated September 19th last year, the News Guild also asked for communications between Elk and Pointer. Elk said he refused, and a subsequent letter dated September 1st for the News Guild, regarding its request, does not make any mention of them. Hmm. That's interesting. Right? Why? Yeah, I wonder why. Elk said he now awaits the, judge deci the judge's decision on whether he'll have to produce the documents the News Guild requested. He added that he's been in touch with New York Times VP and Deputy General Counsel David McCraw, who told him the paper might issue a legal brief on his behalf if the judge requests one. They don't want this either. <clears throat> I'm supposed yeah. to... Danielle Rhodes, ha, ha, said the paper will access, uh, will assess the as the case progresses. But it sounds like he's going to have some kind of backing. Freedom of the Press Foundation, a nonprofit devoted to protecting the First and Fourth Amendment rights for journalists, publicly questioned the News Guild's actions in a post on X. Right. Well, I got issues with the Freedom of the Press Foundation, though they're in this case they're right. They had, they were very slow to defend Julian Assange, which is really weird because they were basically founded because of him. The News Guild is now seeking reporters' yep. communications with sources in court. How exactly does that serve the interests of their members, other journalists, or the public? He said he views his legal fight as an attempt to drag out his lawsuit. Right. So they're wasting the money of the News Guild at a time when reporters are under attack. And now they're attacking reporters and getting them to give up the names of their sources. It's ridiculous. Now, on top of that, he published, uh, now this is Mike. That's Mike, by the way. Hi, Mike. Right? So, New York Times voices their support. This was on October 16th. Right? So, this was ben, Semaphore's Ben Smith but broke the story that he's fighting a subpoena attempt. Now the Times has weighed in and that they're, again, backing a um they said they would write a brief potentially which is nice they've already raised now i think it's over more than fifteen hundred dollars for the legal defense fund you know he's he needs to raise really between three and five so if you can he's got places on his website here at paydayreport.com that you can donate so they are trying you know again this is a union of journalists that's trying because he accused correctly, accurately, he didn't even accuse, he had a story.
that he then leaked to the New York Times about a guy who was committing sexual misconduct. And they blew him out as a result when they confronted him with this. Rather than either, they either just got rid of him to not have to deal with it at all, or they, right? I mean, yep. it's another way of going after independent journalists. Yep. Tie, tie them up in court. Destroy us all! Right? Make them go after source, you know, um, you know, reveal, reveal sources, do whatever it takes to chip away at Honest journalism. And that's what this guy's trying to do. By the way, what Mike is doing, he's got long COVID. He also is, has been covering the GM strike. I mean, the UA, UAW strike.